and um, because he just wasn't interactive enough, he didn't have enough control, and I which was that. so funny because I remember even though I was so nervous, I loved the shit out of that show, like it was so real almost kind of punk, you know, yeah. and we oh, never was, yeah. we never had a show like that at that point mm -hmm. that was that packed or anything. So I I loved it even though I had that definitely nervous fit where I, I literally thought I was going to puke. I was like, like I gagged a little yeah. bit to the left side of me. But I mean, that place was disgusting anyway, so it didn't really help. Like, it smelled like piss, especially where I was at. Like, I Okay, what, ever, what happened after okay, Zebra so, Mountain? No, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we're going to just stop at Zebra Mountain. We're going to run out of fucking footage. That's fine. Okay, Zebra Mountain. We ended up doing a lot of shit after that. November came uh, December. I have we, a fucking film card we, if we need it to. We played um, shows in December, maybe. We played a few different shows in December. We played a New Year's show. Oh, my on the God. First, on the first, I could be wrong. But somewhere, I think on the 1st of January, we released The Band That Sucks through TuneCore, and it hit iTunes and a bunch of other stores. And I remember that the, I got advice from Angeline Bentley and also Pete. Pete was just like, hey, the label put it on iTunes. I don't know how you, I got on iTunes. It's like they just did it. But cool, but I was really curious of how you get on iTunes. I remember talking to Angeline Bentley. She's like, CD Baby or TuneCore? We did TuneCore for the Dragon Susie album. I'm like, okay, what the fuck is that? Like, that shit up. And in the scene, we were the first band that was on iTunes. People were like, I, on iTunes? I remember Holly was like, when you guys were on iTunes, I was like, you get, they're on iTunes? So she thought, like, I guess scene kids, like, really thought that was a big deal. Like, Yeah, because especially no one around here had any kind of... I mean, mind. I think even I was shocked. I'm like, we're on iTunes, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was really cool. And that was, was circa 2010. Yeah, so that was, like, January 1st because we were getting it all ready. And basically, The Band That Sucks was the album title based off of... Okay. It's just like this is permanent like just chaos where I could say the reason why we called it the band that sucks was because after the first rehearsal with her pretending to play guitar and Emily pretending to play bass, the sound sucked so bad <laughs> with all the amps that were supposed yeah. to be playing different samples and it's supposed to sound separate and really large. We were in a 10 by 10 room and then it just, all the sound was bouncing and it sounded horrible and I remember we were on the grass somewhere afterward and Jacob Brown was like, the band that sucks and he just kept yes, saying that. I remember that. He's like, Zebra Mountain, the band that, that sucks. sucks. He was so disappointed and I'm like, that needs to be an album just because we're going to beat that reputation. Even though it doesn't even exist, but we're gonna beat that reputation. Okay, and we so we called the but we called the band that sucks, the band the album that, and what it basically that was all the EPs. Put what it, it was kind of like a Green Day. A, I took it from the idea a thousand thirty nine smooth out slappy hours, yeah. which was all their EPs put together, and I kind of took that idea and I took all of our EPs and put it because it takes money to put out an album on iTunes. So like to save money, I kind of we put all the albums together. So you essentially we made this, really great this twenty seven for... I think it was twenty four or twenty seven track album that we put out on iTunes and that ended up kind of representing us for more than half of two thousand ten mm -hmm. and we were whenever we'd play out we were selling copies of that and we were you know saying hey we it's started on, making merch it's on iTunes we started making some DIY merch yeah. her and Emily would make bags and various shit a lot of different shit and. Um, and yeah, we really worked on that, the band that sucks. We really worked that album. We really promoted that album a lot. <clears throat> All right, and then second era of Zebra. Second era of, I mean, I guess second era of Zebra. We we were started doing a lot of music videos. We were making a we, lot of we fun videos played, with the band. We played a lot of shows. The, yeah. To the fact where it would be like for a while we, we would play. We every had we week had for Dom uh, Dom Basco as a guitarist in the band for a second. Yeah. Um, that was also in January of 2010, so it was Don Basco and Dennis on guitar, and then it was um, me, Jake, and Jake, me, Jake, and Jacob, and, and then Stephanie. Dom and Dennis, yeah, I would remember, uh, it was always D&D, &D and then oh, JJJ, right. and, and we still Dennis. had the Wall of Amps, and that's what a lot of people called it, the Wall of Amps, I remember that Aaron Johnson, also the engineer at the Red House later on, like serendipity, years later, he's like, yeah, you guys got a fucking football team. Like, football team up there. We did really did have a lot of... Because we brought in Dawson as a guitar player. So at that point, we had three guitar players, three oh, front yeah. men, and then Stephanie. Yep, three and three. Stephanie and was kind of like the goalie. She was in the back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we had the three cool. forwards and then the three... Basically, the three midfielders. We had, That's like, true. no defender. We just had her as the goalie. We had no bass player as, the, like, a... No, as because, a sweeper or anything yeah, like that. we did that. 
So we did that. We had a billion amps. There's a point when we played a Red House show, and I want this filmed for sure. There's a point when we played at Red House somewhere in 2010 when we had two guitar amps that were just automated with two different guitar uh, tracks playing through these amps, and we had. <laughs> three guitar players with their three amps and these weren't combo amps these were stacks I these were like large ass cabinets with right. heads excuse me so you have two we have five guitar amps and a bass cabinet to play bass and that was automated that was a track going to the bass amp then we had two speakers that were just playing drums Oh, and samples, yeah. The right? samples, just playing drums, and we had a subwoofer that was hella <laughs> oh, large. <shit. laughs> and then you had Stephanie's drum kit. So there's like the wall, they call it the wall of amps because we had a fucking wall of amps and we had like, <laughs> fucking seven <laughs> players in our band. <laughs> <laughs> like I so, forgot. We so we had three guitar players, three front men, Stephanie, I and then we had this the wall three of amps. Front men thing because that was always just no one had three. So just you know? ridiculous, and the like, colors it's, of the it's amps. It's already crazy it like, to have two, but to have fucking three. And the amps looked so weird. They were like green and yellow and yes, shit. Spray painted. Just the weirdest fucking band that you're gonna see. And like a lot of people wanted to discredit us, but we were no, we were no next stop Mars. We weren't like. Yeah. We weren't even like you know uh what do i want to say we weren't like dance my heart we were it yeah. was like there was a there was an authenticity it was a punk thing it wasn't like a pop pussy thing like if i could say that it wasn't like it wasn't like a hey guys thing it was like let's fucking destroy your fucking face <laughs> and like we're gonna use robot technology we're not we're not a pop act you know what i mean yeah. that's really what it was is like we weren't a pop act we just had uh, we were basically like we kind of uh, equated it to like the metaphor of the cyborg arms. Yeah. It was like a band that was half cyborg, you know? Really get past it. Okay, so I was just going to talk about, because some people don't know how spur of the moment some of these shows were, to where um, Jamie would be like, hey, by the way, like not even asking if I could do it or anything. It would be like, hey, by the way, we're playing a show tomorrow, and here's a CD of three of the new songs we're going to play. And it would be like, you have this much time. And it would always be, I have work, you know what I mean? I would have work for five to seven hours, some shit. And it would be like, you need to learn the songs by tomorrow night. It would always be like that. And I'm already an avid like anxiety haver that's a terrible term i just oh god okay drunk brain um and so it was just it even made it worse and i would always um get super anxiety about it because it'd be like there's no way i'm gonna play this perfect but jamie would just put that timer on me and like you just you don't have a choice <laughs> And so I remember, especially that New Year's show, that I didn't fucking want to play and that you knew was happening, so you got us on the bill hella last minute. <laughs> and so... I think ours was a number of shows. I think that was really what we were trying to do. Uh, yeah. Which and I want to do again. Uh, just, uh, fuck, fuck, no. Just no. We need to be prepared for the show. And that that's my whole deal, is that I, I don't, I'm not into the spur-of-the-moment things exactly. You know, like, okay, once in a while... Like, I, I got time, yeah, let's, you know, go fucking spray paint some shit randomly, you know? But not, hey, by the way, we're playing this huge show for the local area, and you have a couple hours to learn these songs before we have to play them. And I remember one song specifically, which was the uh, Streets of Rage, Rage Down, I think is what we called it. Hey, 